Welcome, everyone, to week 13 of the NFL action. This is the Predictive Playbook, and I am your host, John Ryan. I'm pleased to have my co-hosts, Don Buster and Rocky Atkinson, with me, and we are going to get right to it. Buster's going to break down the game between the Tampa Bay Bucks, who, you know, I, I can't remember the last time Tom Brady struggled with a team like this. Um, maybe never, but they're taking on Atlanta on the road. Uh, Atlanta is a, a team that is uh, kind of sneaking into the playoff picture with a five and six straight up record. They're five and six against the spread, five and five over under. Tampa Bay's eight and three, five and six against the number, and seven and three to the over. Where's the best bet in this matchup, Buster? Well, John, uh, I just want to uh, thank you for having me as as always, and uh, it's a pleasure. Let's hope we can uh, do what we did last week. We went 3-0 and on this video, so uh, why not do it again, right? Okay. I agree. What we like here is uh, we're going to go with the over, over 50 and a half with, uh, in this game. Uh, when these two teams played in week two, the line was 52. So we're getting a little value here. My numbers in the week two game was 53. It's actually gone up to uh, 54 now. So I think there's lots of value here betting on the over. Tampa Bay hung up 48 on them last time in Tampa Bay. And Atlanta had 25 themselves. Uh, if you remember that game, it was a close game. Going in the fourth quarter, it was 28-25 with about nine minutes left, already over the total of uh, the posted total that we're going to go after on Sunday. And you know what? Then Tampa Bay just boom, 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 three touchdowns, and it was it was it was out of out of reach for Atlanta. So Atlanta, you never know. There might be a backdoor cover for them there too. But uh, like I say, we're going to go with the side here. Tampa Bay has scored sixty eight points in their last two games, so they're going to have no problem scoring against this Atlanta defense. It's just a matter of uh, Matty Ice is going to be able to to add to score with them, and I think they will because Atlanta. Like, like John, you had mentioned, they're 5-6 and six now, and I know 5-6 and six is a terrible record, but they're in the hunt for the playoffs. That's, that's what that means for them. And, I, and the last game that they played in Atlanta, they threw a big egg up. They, they, they didn't, as say, an egg, as in goose eggs. They didn't even score against a New England defense, who is very good. But uh, Tampa Bay can be thrown on, and I think uh, you'll see uh, Matt Ryan do that in this game. Uh, also, John, like always... I got a lot of nice trends leaning for this game to go over as well. I like solid trends. The over is 10-1 and one in the last 11 games between these clubs. So when they get together, it just seems that they play those type of games. The over is perfect 5-0 and oh last five years in Atlanta. And also, the over is 12-3 in the last 15 games when Tampa Bay comes off a win and a cover. Can see this game being over early fourth quarter again like it was in week two so give us over 50 and a half in the atlanta tampa bay game awesome breakdown buster you know i love numbers absolutely love numbers and that was a, a pretty dramatic comeback by the bucks last week which so probably that offense is number three in the nfl i believe uh you know scoring over 30 points and only three teams that are doing that but that i love that play i'm gonna go next here and let Rocky be the anchor. But I'm looking at the Eagles and the Jets. And uh, as you know, I do that uh, sentiment on Twitter with my uh, Python applications that I developed. You know, it takes out 3,000 tweets that are related to the betting community. And when I ran it for this game or this year, let's talk about the year with Philadelphia fan base. It's the most volatile fan base you can imagine. Uh, When they beat the Saints, uh, they were, you know, the, the Sentiment was so bullish that they were going to make the playoffs and possibly, you know, chase down Dallas. Uh, now, coming off this miserable loss to the Giants, uh, you know, we're back to the way it was right before the Detroit game where it was fire the coach. This, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. The, you know, Jalen Hurts stinks. And that's where we're kind of at right now. And if you remember, that offense exploded for over 40 points against Detroit, which is not a good team. But neither are the Jets. So I think you know where I'm heading with this. I'm heading to the over. Uh, the over opened at 46, and, and naturally the, the line is coming down. I'm not surprised by that. I think you might be able to get 44.5 between now and Sunday, and I'd be patient with it. Uh, the Jets were plus 7, and there's money coming in on the Jets. Uh, I do think this is going to be a very competitive game. I don't think it's going to be a blowout like it was with the Eagles in Detroit. Um, 
the over is 23 and 7 in the Eagles' last 30 road games, uh, facing a team with a losing home record, which the Jets certainly uh, qualify for that. So 23 and 7 is pretty strong. And uh, betting system here, you're going to bet over with any team. In this case, it's Philadelphia in a non conference matchup that is coming off a close loss of seven or fewer points to a division rival. Okay. So that has gone 65 27 the last 10 seasons for 70% winners on the over. And it's only 3 and 2 this year. I think this game plays over. And like Buster said, I wouldn't be surprised if it's midway through the third quarter. So that'll take care of my pick. And now we'll go to Rocky here. And Rocky's taking a look at um, the L LA Chargers are on the road. In a huge game for both teams against the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm seeing 70% of the money coming in on the Bengals right now. The line's gone from an opening of two and a half to now currently three in favor of Cincinnati. Cincinnati seven and four. Chargers are six and five and can ill afford to go to six and six. They're three and two on the road. Rocky, where's the best bet in this matchup? Thank you for having me, John. Um Absolutely. We got the Chargers. They're coming off a loss against the Broncos this past week, uh, but they remain only a game out of first in the AFC West where any of these four teams can still win it. And I feel like they're going to be very focused for this game. Uh, Cincinnati's off a huge 41-10 to 10 blowout win over Pittsburgh this past Sunday. I can see a possible letdown situation here. Uh, first thing I see here is we have a Chargers team that, that has a winning record of 3-2 and two on the road, and actually, the entire AFC West have the exact same three and two records away from home this season. And winning away from home tells me that all four of these teams are, are decent teams, including this Chargers team. Uh, the Chargers face the Giants next week, so I don't think we're going to catch them looking ahead to that game. Cincinnati has a decent 49er team on deck. Um, this Chargers team and Justin Herbert. They have the league's number six ranked passing offense right now, averaging 280.8 passing yards per game. Cincinnati pass defense isn't, isn't that good. They're ranked number 25 in the league, allowing 254.5 passing yards per game this season. Herbert has completed 66% of his passes this year for 3,230 yards. He has 24 touchdowns compared to only 10 interceptions. Chargers defense is solid against the pass. They rank number five in the league uh, this year, allowing only 204.5 passing yards per game. Uh, I feel like they're going to be able to slow Joe Burrow down here in this one. A few trends to consider here. Uh, the Chargers are 35-16-4 and four against the spread of the last 55 games as a road underdog. Cincinnati is 2-5 and five against the spread of the last ho seven home games against a team with a winning road record and the Chargers qualify for that. Uh, Cincinnati's 3-8 and eight against spread last 11 games after a straight-up win, and the road team is 5-1 and one against spread last six meetings overall in this series. And as you mentioned, uh, John, the public is all over the Bengals here right now, moving the line from minus 2.5 to minus 3 currently. So I'm going to gladly take the other side, and we're going to play the Chargers plus the points on Sunday. Awesome breakdown. I think it's going to be a big bounce back week for Justin Herbert and the Chargers. That is a great play. I'm I'm going to be on that one. I'm going to be on all of these. And to recap our bets, I'm taking the over in the Eagles Jets. And that will end up being a, a four unit bet that I give to my premium clients. Uh, Buster is going with the over in the Atlanta Falcons Tampa Bay game where Tampa Bay might score the total by themselves, in my humble opinion. They and could. Rocky's going with the Chargers on the side to take care of business in Cincinnati this week. Guys, we did three picks in less than 10 minutes. That is awesome stuff. And I must say, before we go, get over to sportsmember.com and get on our discounted subscriptions for the month of December. There's a lot of offers going out there that carry you all the way through the Super Bowl. Some of them are less than $3 a day for all sports. You can't not do this. Rocky alone is hitting 67% against the spread in the NFL. And we're trying to chase them down, Buster. We'll, we'll catch up maybe. But anyway, I think that's awesome. 67% awesome. is just ridiculously good. So on behalf of Rocky, Buster, myself, sportsmemo.com, wagertalk.com, and the predictive playbook shows, may all the wins be yours. <laughs>